business classification scheme and retention schedule is central to the Eloquent Record system, controlling all your workflow activities from filing to final disposition. Your classification scheme is tied directly to your retention and disposition schedules in order to help you manage the life cycle of your records. This presentation will discuss the basics of classification and retention and how these schedules operate in the Eloquent Records database. What is classification? What is a schedule? And why is it so important? A classification scheme places records into the context of the organizational activities that created, received, and made use of them. They usually use numeric or alphanumeric codes, though some places use sources or a taxonomy. It's important to have a classification scheme in place for many reasons. One is retrieval. If your records are stored in a logical system, you'll be able to browse to their location, whether on the shelf or in a file directory on the computer. A second reason is it provides a framework for access and control. It's much easier to apply permissions to logical groupings of records. Third, it provides a framework for applying retention and disposition. Legal and business rules for retaining and disposing of records are based on function and activity. If you organize your records this way in the first place, it's a straightforward matter to stay on top of your legal duties and be in a position to defend your disposition policies. A fourth reason is to make your lives overall easier when it comes to e-discovery. You'll know exactly where your records are. Classification structure should be hierarchical, moving from the general to the specific. A good classification structure is also based on function. This gives it flexibility in the case of company reorg. So you have functions at the top, and you'll often find these named in a company's or a department's mandates and responsibilities. These break down into activities, which break down into transactions. An example is human resources, breaking down into occupational health and safety, and then inspections. An organization's classification will cover all the functions and activities it's responsible for. It should be a complete representation of the work they do. Creating one from scratch can be hard work. There are many resources available to help you through this process, and some can even provide you with sample structures to get going. An important part of this process, though, however time-consuming, is to do a complete records inventory of your organization. This process will include interviewing key stakeholders, the records creators and filers, and it will reveal to you what activities are producing what records, who is creating them, how they are being created, used, and stored, who should have access to them, and how long they're needed for. There's no point in implementing a pre-made classification plan if it doesn't match the records or the business processes of your organization. It won't be useful to anyone. Let's talk about retention and disposition now. The other key component to a classification scheme is the information that tells you how long you need to keep these records around for, and what you should do with them after that. This is your scheduling information. There's two places you need to look in determining a record schedule. Applicable legislation and business needs. You might also want to consider organizational accountability and community expectations depending on what area your business is in and who your stakeholders are. Retentions are usually applied at lower levels in order to take into account the specific needs and requirements for different records. There are many pieces of legislation that specify how long specific types of records need to be kept around. Financial acts often specify seven years, for example. Some will give you minimum lengths, others will give you maximum. Some specify certain records, others will simply refer to the type of information, wherever it may be found. Business needs cover a wide range of requirements, dependent on the specifics of how you use information in your organization. A simple example is emergency plans. You only need the current, up-to-date version of the plan. Old plans can be destroyed when superseded. It's a good idea to destroy records as soon as allowed. This avoids a pileup in your storage locations, liability down the road, and general information overload. The other possibility is to send your records to the archives for appraisal and potential preservation. Consult with your archivist on final dispositions to ensure records with lasting value don't get destroyed. Let's look at two examples from an insurance company with branches across the continent. They have done an excellent job of putting together their classification scheme and schedules, 
and relaying all the necessary information through their Eloquent Records database. Note first the hierarchy on the left-hand side. It has only three levels, keeping their scheme simple and easy to browse. On the right-hand side is the detail display for one of the third-level classifications. At the top we see the hierarchy run down again, with sequence codes this time. This is followed by a description of what kind of records get filed under this classification. The example documents are particularly helpful. The more information you can provide here, the easier you make it for your users to correctly classify their records. The next section contains information about retention and disposition. The final disposition for this classification is to the archives. The records are to be kept for six years after the triggering event, which is specified as the end of the relationship with the union. It's good to be as descriptive and clear as you can be for triggering events in order to minimize confusion. To cover themselves if this retention is ever called into question, they point to the Provincial Limitations Acts. The last section is on access and security. The data in these fields will tell you the level of security classification and whether private information is contained in this set of records. This then determines who can be given access to these records, including file directory permissions and eloquent records. Let's look at a second example. Again, at the top of the detail display, we see a repetition of the hierarchy to put this classification in context. Following is a description of the records that should be filed under this classification and a list of detailed examples. Note how both in this description section and further down under cross-reference, they have provided related classification information. This is helpful, for example, when you're trying to figure out where to file your records. If you're browsing through a section of classification and not finding quite what you're looking for, if you find something close, it will point you to the right place. Sometimes the right classification is in an entirely different section. Another example is if you're in an e-discovery process. Knowing related classifications will help you collect all the relevant information. So having those cross-reference pointers is very useful. The retention and disposition section explains the end of year trigger and why their retention differs from the legal requirement. Below is listed the determining citation followed by other influencing citations. Having legal backup is good. Do your homework and keep track of what legislation relates to your records. Check up on legislative changes at regular intervals to ensure you're still in compliance. At the bottom we have the access restrictions again. The entry forms in Eloquent Records are designed with a hierarchical classification structure in mind. We have single entry forms for comprehensive data entry that include fields for description, alternate terms, relationship links, and legal citations, as well as spreadsheet forms designed for more rapid skeleton data entry. We can also import your scheme from an already existing source to save you the trouble of entering it yourself. Here's the classification example in a single entry form. The higher level field displays the parent classification. Name is the name of this classification, and sequence code displays the continuation of the code sequence for this classification. Codes will build on themselves as you move further down the hierarchy. For this example, the code will combine the 011 from the parent with the 5600 of the child to form 011-5600, which will identify this classification as a shorthand. Then we see the description field, which explains what types of records should be classified here. There's space for synonyms and cross-references. Synonyms are alternative terms that users might use in a keyword search to return this classification. Cross-reference will link this classification to related classifications. Then we move to the retention and disposition section, which is split over the screenshot in the next. We have a transition code, which could be anything from event to superseded to obsolete. That field can be modified to be meaningful to your records management program. This is followed by the number of active months and inactive months, followed by a final disposition method, which could be destroy, permanent, selective archival retention, full archival retention. This section is followed by fields for legal citations, the Office of Record or Primary Responsibility, and flags for confidential information, vital records, and personal information. There is also space for other access restrictions or to elucidate the meanings of the flags above. 
This is an example of the spreadsheet web form showing the creation or editing of multiple classifications under a single parent. This form makes it really easy to work with multiple records at once. There are tricks for duplicating information down columns and incrementing numerical values in sequence. You can enter the basic data in one shot and come back to fill in the details later. This form, like all our forms, is customizable to enable you to use the system to your best ability. Let's take a look at the public search and see how to browse and navigate through the hierarchy. Often the main page will look something like this, with an introduction to the classification and retention schedules and instructions for searching. This particular scheme is from the LGMA, developed for local government here in BC. The easiest way to dive in is by clicking the top-down hierarchy button by the keyword search box. All the top levels of the classification hierarchy will appear along the left. Use the plus and minus buttons to expand and collapse each level. This scheme separates the administrative classifications from the operational. This is a good distinction to make. Administrative functions are usually the same or similar across organizations and contain things like finance and HR, functions everyone does and everyone is responsible for. The operational functions are those that are specific to your organization and your mandates. As you click on each classification, its detail display will appear on the right. Here's an example of a different classification scheme created for an international consulting firm. This one doesn't make use of code sequences. Navigation functions the same by clicking on the Expand and Collapse buttons. This classification was actually originally managed flatly on spreadsheets until it became unmanageable. Moving it into Eloquent and injecting a hierarchical structure has proved tremendously useful to them. Click on a classification to see the detail display on the right. Their legal citation section includes internal policies. The public search has a handy saved list feature. This allows you to mark classifications of interest and save them to a list, which you can then print out or view in a more detailed report. To save classifications to your list, simply check off the empty box next to each one of interest. When you're done, click View List up in the top bar. A new window opens with your list and several options in the Go menu. Let's select the hierarchy display with columns and press Go. This particular report displays the full hierarchy of the top-level classification we chose, along with each child's retention and disposition information, if entered. These reports can be useful to the records manager in order to check structure and consistency, and they can be helpful to the user who could select once the classifications they need to be using on a regular basis and save the list at their desk. Applying classification to your records is also easy. Classification is applied at the folder level and is inherited by every record filed to that folder. This form shows creating that folder level file. Aside from the file details, fill in the classification field and the retention and disposition for that folder and its contents is taken care of. Eloquent Records will automatically calculate when it's up for disposition based on that retention period. There are many ways for you to maintain control over your classification and various types of reports to run. By default, only the records admin account has access to editing the classification scheme. To all others, it is read-only. Users can also be further restricted in their viewing and in their filing based on any number of parameters, including classification. The advanced architecture of the software also permits several branches or institutions to share a single system. This branch control module gives local autonomy over subsets of the records for some functions and global control over the entire system for centralized management functions. For example, everyone has read-only access to the classification scheme, but the records coordinator for each work group or branch can create and work with only their own subset of records or folders. There are also a variety of reporting options, like you saw a few slides ago with the hierarchy report. You can run these in the back end on your classification scheme and your records, 
and you can use any number of specific parameters to get the results you're looking for. Eloquent Records will also auto-calculate retention periods on your records for you. When you run your year-end disposition reports, it will pull up all eligible records. You can print out disposition approval reports for sign-off. The other thing to note is you can flag records for legal holds. Such flagged records will be excluded from your disposition reports, so you don't accidentally destroy records you shouldn't. The system will track this for you and protect the records. Here's a small and varied list of resources. The ARMA and AIIM sites are loaded with information for the beginner to the advanced practitioner, and both offer training courses. The Dirks Manual is out of Australia, and you'll find steps A through C particularly useful for conducting a records inventory and business analysis. Look around that government site while you're at it. There's a lot of really good information to be found there. The next two are solid texts you might wish to purchase, followed by a journal article on using a big bucket classification strategy, and then two blogs you might find interesting and helpful. Eloquent records can be configured for inactive records only. Accessioning, allocating warehouse space, retrieval and tracking, legal holds, timely disposition. Or, you can start by opening physical and virtual folders for both physical and electronic active records. The system is flexible and accommodating. It can also come preloaded with any of the three classification schemes you've seen here today. Give us a call for a free one-on-one -on -one demo if you'd like to see more. Thanks for your time, and please feel free to contact us with questions and feedback.